All right, I've got a bit of an update. We have some new research regarding the GLP-1 medications like Wagovi and Ozempic and their effects on mental health. And if you haven't already seen my video on this topic, go and check out my link down below. I talked about the GLP-1 medications and the possible link to depression and suicide risk. But if you don't have time to go check out that video, the quick and the short of it is that a number of health regulators such as the FDA, the European Medicine Associations and such like that, we're investigating possible case reports of Ozempic and other GLP-1 medications being linked to things like depression and suicidal ideation. Now, obviously this is something that is very serious and we need to look at it in detail to make sure that this isn't something that these medications are causing or if it is, we need to start implementing action plans and seeing just how severe the situation is. Now, the relationship between obesity and mood disorders is really quite complex. You see, when some people lose weight, their mood improves, but when other people lose weight, that doesn't seem to be the case. Now, for the reasons as to why an individual's mood would worsen, we don't exactly know. We know that we have some good quality meta-analysis looking at individuals that underwent bariatric surgery, and when we matched them to controls that were of the same weight but didn't get surgery, what we found is that the individuals that underwent bariatric surgery were indeed at an increased risk of depression, mood disorders, and suicidal ideation. Now, some of the theories as to why we may get mood disorders with a intervention such as bariatric surgery, it's thought that maybe there's something with unmet expectations or unmet expectations around the improvement in quality of life that people were expecting, or there might be some things with, you know, a shift in kind of your identity. You've been living in a large body for such a long period of time that suddenly when you're living in a smaller body, there's a lot of things that people don't really talk about that tends to happen. Suddenly you'll be getting um, different attention from the opposite sex. Suddenly people will be treating you differently. All of the, well, fucked up things that society ultimately does and how they treat individuals in larger bodies. But when you go from that, from a larger body to a smaller body, that could be quite the mental mind F. Regardless, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that we need to identify why and how these things are happening, what is the underlying cause, and now with these medications, if they are leading to an increased risk of depression and suicidal ideation, we need to figure it out and we need to do something about it. Fortunately, we now have a new study that gives us a little bit more information. And hey, if you're getting some value out of my content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on those notifications so you make sure you know exactly when I post another video. As well, check out my YouTube membership page where I give the members exclusive access to myself once a month where I do a members only live. As well, I take any kind of questions and do my best to answer all the questions that the members then provide. We also got some new content for members only coming out in the near future, so be sure to go and check it out. Again. All the links are down below. So we have this new study here by Wang and friends that looked at a population of 240,000 individuals. So what they did in this study is they went back in time and they looked at the health records of individuals that had overweight or obesity and were either prescribed some megalotide, also known as Wagovi, also known as Ozempic, or a non-GLP-1 based medication such as Contrave. They then compared the people in both groups, so the people that got the semaglutide and the people that didn't get the semaglutide, and they compared how many individuals in each group reported effects of suicidal ideation. And overall, their results were quite interesting. So first off, they looked at individuals who had never reported any kind of history of suicidal ideation, so they had never gone to the doctor and said that I'm feeling like ending my life or anything like that. And what they found is that the individuals that were taking semaglutide had a 73% lower risk of reporting suicidal ideation compared to the other kinds of therapies. Now, as for individuals that already had a history of suicidal ideation, so they had already gone to the doctor, there was something on their record that said they had come in and said, I am feeling these kinds of feelings and such. For those individuals that were prescribed semaglutide, there was a 56% lower chance of them coming back to the doctor with this symptom of suicidal ideation. And so this data indicates that semaglutide may actually have quite a beneficial effect in reducing the risk of suicidal ideation. And in fact, it may lower that risk by quite a significant margin. 
Now, the authors did do an additional analysis, and what they did here is they went and looked at the individuals that were taking semaglutide for type 2 diabetes management. And the reason they did this is because technically, semaglutide was only approved for obesity and overweight management back in 2021. So they only had about a six month chunk of data when they did this study to actually look at to determine are these people you know, presenting with suicidal ideation and are they using it for obesity? So there's only about a six month period where they could look at. Whereas semaglutide has technically been on the market for a long time as Ozempic for the treatment of type two diabetes. And so there was a larger data set that they could go to over a longer period of time and even more individuals. So to give you a comparison, for people that were taking it just for obesity, there was only about 240,000 individuals and they only had that six month period. Whereas individuals that were taking it for type two diabetes, there was about 1.5 million individuals and they had about a three year period of data. So obviously with more people and more data, we can really distill down and get a much better look at what is actually happening with this medication. What they found is that for both people who had never had a history of suicidal ideation, again, never went to the doctor, wasn't on their record, and also for individuals that did have a history of suicidal ideation, for those people that were given semaglutide or prescribed semaglutide, what they found is that there was actually a 42% lower risk for both groups of those people showing up and expressing suicidal ideation when they were on semaglutide. So again, it looks like semaglutide does consistently among these two population groups reduce the risk of suicidal ideation. And further, these results were consistent among genders, amongst age, and all other kinds of confounders. And hey, just as a quick aside, if you are looking for support on your weight management journey, or you have a question or anything, anything of the above, you can go down below to the links and you can book a consultation with myself where we can have a quick one-on-one -on -one and hopefully I can help and support you on your weight management journey. So while the data does look good, there are some limitations with this study. Again, the data that was looking at individuals that had obesity or overweight was only over a six month period and it was a much smaller group of people. And yes, individuals that have diabetes, particularly type two diabetes, are likely also struggling with their weight. There are going to be slight differences between these two types of populations. And so there was still the benefit seen with the people that have diabetes. So semaglutide didn't increase that risk. In fact, it looks like it lowered that risk but that does affect the generalizability and as we go over time and we get more and more people on these drugs that are just using it for obesity and overweight, those numbers could certainly change, especially as time goes on. As well, this study was a retrospective chart review. So the authors had to go back in time, look at patient charts, and basically they had to match up and balance and try to account for various confounders that may come out and may affect the ultimate results of this study. The problem here is that there is a lot less control. So the authors aren't just saying, these people get this drug and these people don't, and that's the only difference between them. There's gonna be things like misdiagnoses, overdiagnoses, incorrect charting, all kinds of things are going to happen in terms of the various charts and stuff because the authors don't have that specific control that we would see in say a randomized controlled trial. As well, another big confounder with this study is that the clinicians themselves, when they were working with somebody, if that person presented with more depression or mood disorder type features, the clinician themselves may have decided not to prescribe them semaglutide and may have chosen to pick a drug like Contrave, which has an antidepressant component to it. And so they may have favored semaglutide for people that had a lower risk or were presenting with less depression and mood disorder type symptoms. Ultimately, that is going to favor semaglutide and make it look a little bit better in that it's lowering the risk of suicidal ideation. So overall, there is some definite limitations with this study and we really can't do a causality and say that yes, semaglutide does indeed lower the risk of suicidal ideation. All we can say is that there is certainly an association. It looks like people who are prescribed semaglutide do you have a lower risk of suicidal ideation, both individuals that have diabetes and obesity, but that's about as far as we can take it. 
And so ultimately we're going to need more research, but this is a reassuring result and does confirm some of the results that we have seen in the well-controlled randomized controlled trials where there hasn't been a signal of increased risk of mood disorders. So it is one more piece to the puzzle, but the FDA and the European medicine associations and agencies and such are still ongoing with their investigation and looking at more data and case reports in order to fully tease out what is the true picture that is going on here. But this data again is reassuring and is a positive for the GLP-1 medications. Regardless, if you are currently on one of these medications and you are experiencing a mood disorder, you're experiencing depression, or you're experiencing suicidal ideation, please go and check out all the links down below that I have in my description and seek out the help that you need. As well, please, please, please reach out to your friends, family supports, as well as your healthcare providers to ensure that you stay safe and you stay healthy. And I always want you to know that you are loved and you are worthy of love and belonging. So that is it and that is all my friends in terms of an update with regards to suicidal ideation and depression with the GLP-1 medications like Ozempic. Of course, as new information and studies get published, I will be sure to review them and bring them to your attention so that you can continue to be updated and knowing what are the full risks and or benefits that come with these medications. So until next time, my friends, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well. Turn on those notifications so you know when I post a new video check out the membership side of my YouTube page where every month on the last Wednesday of the month I do a YouTube live for members only and I take your questions and talk about a number of different topics in real time. My next live will be Wednesday February 28th at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and I'm going to be giving you a weight loss how-to 101 kind of course if you will so be sure to check it out and all of the links again are down below. Also, check me out on my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan. We're on the tick, the talk, the gram, you name it. And of course, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, be sure to drop them down below and I will do my best to answer them. And of course, I want you to always know that it's going to be those small tweaks that lead to those massive peaks.